In 1994, when Tom Ford became the creative director for Gucci, the company was pretty much bankrupt. Since then, we've seen the release of fragrances such as Gucci Pour Homme 1, which is sadly now discontinued, and Gucci Pour Homme 2, which is becoming increasingly harder to find. That's the tea base fragrance. By 1999, the company was worth over $4 billion when at the time when he started, the company was pretty much bankrupt. By 2004, when Tom Ford stopped being the creative director for Gucci, the company was worth $10 billion, and for the next two years, it took four people to pick up where he left off. In 2006, Frida Giannini became the creative director for Gucci, and under her creative direction, we saw such releases as Gucci Guilty, Gucci Guilty Intense, Gucci Guilty Black, Gucci Guilty Low, and several collector's editions. In 2014, when she stopped being the creative director, we had Alessandro Michel, and we currently have Alessandro Michel, and his collaboration with Alberto Morias as the perfumer has burned releases such as Gucci Guilty Absolute, which I didn't really care for, the Pour Homme and the Pour Femme, and now we have Gucci Guilty Oud. With another Gucci Oud scent already on the market, is this one going to be redundant? Is it worth checking out? Is it worth the $137 price tag? I'm excited to tell you all of these things, so stay tuned. formally start the review, I do want to mention that there will be a giveaway attached to this video, so make sure to stay tuned until the very end so you can find out how to enter the draw. And if this video makes it to 1,000 likes in a week's time, I'm going to pick a second winner who's also going to win a 5 milliliter decant of this fragrance. So this fragrance was released in 2018, and the perfumer behind this blend is Alberto Morias. Now, Alberto Morias has done other fragrances for Gucci, including Gucci Guilty Absolute, and he's also responsible for the famed Aqua Di Gio by Giorgio Armani, which was a mid-90s release. Now, oud fragrances on the designer level are a dime a dozen, but they're definitely out there. We've seen companies like Versace, John Varvatos, even Abercrombie & Fitch, dip their hand into the pot when it comes to the release of an oud scent. So with this oud fragrance, is it something that's worth checking out? How does it compare to Gucci Intense oud? Is this more complex or is it on the same level? I'm excited to tell you what I think, but let's go ahead and start things off with the presentation. So the presentation for Gucci Guilty oud is quite nice. It's black with gold accents, very similar to other Gucci Guilty fragrances that you might have seen before. As far as the bottle is concerned, black once again, gold accents. On the very bottom here, you will see the serial number printed on the sticker in white ink, and that's where you know you have to look if you want to authenticate your purchase. You have Gucci engraved into the cap. The cap itself does click into place, so you can pick this one up from the cap, and the distribution on the atomizer is very nice. Let's go ahead and continue with the smell. Now, as soon as this fragrance opens up, you're not really going to get its namesake, but you are going to get this note of blackberry. It kind of gives off a plum vibe to me. It's very fruity and juicy. However, it is short-lived. It only lasts about five minutes on my skin. And then you get this combination of rose and patchouli. The patchouli has a nice warm earthiness and the rose note is sensual, but it's not overly floral. That was one of my concerns with rose and a fruity nuance. Is it going to smell like Armani C? Is it going to smell like any number of other women's fragrances out there that have both a floral component and a fruity component? And luckily this one does not. It takes a while before you pick up on the oud note. And this is where I would like to draw a comparison with Gucci Intense Oud. That fragrance, the oud, punched you in the face, very full frontal, it, it took center stage right away, and that's not what you get here. Here you get a more reserved and conservative oud. It kind of takes a back seat, although it is in there, it just takes a while for it to peek its head through. What you're going to get mostly in the opening is this rose oud combo, which is not typical or it doesn't mimic or resemble other rose oud fragrances, especially ones that we're seeing on the Middle Eastern market. This one takes it in a totally different direction. I would say this is more of a rose patchouli fragrance with an accent of oud in the base. Now the oud that's being used in here, of course, it's not a natural oud, so it's not going to smell barnyardy or B.O.-ish, but it is going to smell different and oriental and exotic and it has this air of mystique about it, which I actually like. So we're seeing under the creative direction of Alessandro Michel, we see some daring fragrances, we see some challenging fragrances, we see fragrances that aren't afraid 
to push the envelope and do things a little bit different, which I actually really do appreciate. Now, I wasn't a fan of Gucci Guilty Absolute. I thought it was a little too daring, too challenging, too smoky, too out there. This one for an oud base fragrance, my expectations were up here and they were totally diminished. I didn't get what I was expecting to get. I was hoping to get more of an ambery scent, but I'm actually pleasantly surprised by the inclusion of the note of blackberry. So all in all, I think they did a pretty cool job with this one. I really enjoyed this scent. Now, some of the pros when considering this scent. One, it smells incredibly pleasant. So nobody's going to be turned off by it. None of the notes in here are overly challenging. And I think it's a really nice blend. And it is a testament of Alberto Morias' talent as a perfumer and him being formally trained. Another pro would be the fact that this is an oud scent, as some would say, it's an oud scent for those who are just getting into oud. So you don't want something overly challenging, overly domineering. It's something that's very accessible, versatile, and easy to wear. And another pro with this one is that it's not too loud. So fragrances of this compositional nature, you don't want them to be too challenging, too radiating off the skin. So I think as far as the performance goes for this one, it's okay. Some of the cons when addressing this scent would be that it's too pricey. It's $137, which is unlike its predecessors. And I think a lot of that has to do with the Oud designation. And when it comes to the blend, I like that they utilize notes that are not too commonly utilized on a designer level. But another con for this one would be that it only lasts about five hours. Now the scent itself does last for a long time, but it really loses its character at like the five hour mark. So in my book, that's pretty much where the longevity ends. And another one of the criticisms that this one might receive is the fact that for an Oud scent, Lovers of oud want to smell oud. So when that's, you know, the thing that's being addressed, and I think you're probably going to be better off with Gucci Intense Oud, but I do think that you shouldn't dismiss this one. It is worth a try. I think it's a very interesting scent, and they're definitely taking the company in a more creative, challenging, daring, and different direction under the creative direction of Alessandro Michel. So I think they did a wonderful job with this one. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. Now, first up, I took a look at the uniqueness and the overall smell, and this is a unique scent. However, I have smelled fragrances like these on the niche market. Now, for some people, that might lead them to say that this fragrance is quote-unquote niche quality. Yeah, I would say so, but definitely try it for yourself. It has a designer appeal with some niche elements in there. Overall smell is very pleasant. I had my wife smell it. She wasn't crazy about it at first, and then it started to grow on her. So now she does like it, but she has others that she would prefer that I wear before this one. Longevity on this one is lackluster. You're gonna get about five hours. It kind of sits closer to the skin. It's more of a personal and intimate scent. When people enter your personal bubble, they will get a whiff of you, but it's not a projection bee. So projection on this one was about an hour, and then right at that five hour mark, like I said, it does lose its character, um, but it gets me through the workday, which is pretty much the only thing that I'm looking for nowadays. As far as versatility is concerned, I do think that you can wear this one all year round, although some people would venture to say that it's good for fall and winter, I get it, but because of the lack of performance, I think you could pull this one off on a cool summer night. Uh, and I do think this one is for dressed up scenarios. So shirt and tie, suit and tie, and it has a level of maturity about it. As far as the presentation goes, I love the presentation. I like how they're switching things up with the bottle. I think it kind of got lost with Gucci Guilty and Intense and Low. They all kind of look similar with like a silver feel about them. This one is black with gold accents. I think it's very classy. It has a regality about it. And lastly, my final verdict on this one is I like the scent but I don't love it. I certainly like it a lot more than Gucci Guilty Absolute. I have to give them that. I like the direction that they're going in. It's more daring, it's more challenging, but it's still very accessible, very wearable. It's just that they're pushing the envelope a little bit, which is what I like to see from Gucci. I'm super excited to see what the company is going to come out with in the future, and I have high hopes for them. Now, as far as the giveaway is concerned, all you have to do is leave a comment down below and tell me what is your favorite Gucci fragrance. Once you do that, and of course you have to be subscribed to me because this giveaway is open to subscribers only, I will enter you into the draw and I will select the winner in one week's time. What I will do is I will pin the winner's comment to the top of this video, so make sure to check back here in a week's time to see if you've won the giveaway. I think YouTube will also send you a notification so you'll know that way as well. 
Thank you so much for tuning in, ladies and gentlemen. I really do appreciate it. That was my review of Gucci Guilty Oud, the newest release by the company Gucci. If you own or have tried this fragrance, let me know what you think. Leave a comment down below. And please don't forget to subscribe for future videos. And that includes reviews just like this one, top tens, giveaways, unboxings, and a whole lot of other fragrance-related content, including special guests. And please don't forget to enable notifications by clicking on that little bell icon. This way, whenever I do release a new video, it will get delivered straight to your feed and you never need to worry about missing any content. Thanks again for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next episode. Take care.